about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. For three months, you've been tracking a pair of hold-up men. There's no pattern to their operation. They're young. They're brutal. Your job, stop them. You'll be amazed when you compare Fatima with other long cigarettes. You'll find they now cost the same. But in Fatima, the difference is quality. You see, Fatima is the quality king-size cigarette because it contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended. And Fatima is extra mild, with a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. So compare Fatima yourself. Fatimas now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Ask your dealer for Fatima. The quality, king-size cigarette. Best of all, long cigarettes. Start enjoying Fatima tomorrow. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step-by-step step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end... From crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Sunday, March 3rd. It was raining in Los Angeles. We are working the night watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Harry Didion, captain of robbery. My name's Friday. I was on the way back from the neighborhood bakery shop, and it was 8.45 a.m. when I got to Collis Avenue. Number 4656. Yeah. What happened? Wasn't the bakery open? Oh, yeah, it was open. I got the stuff right here. Oh, do you have any raisin bread? Yeah, right here. How about the butter horn? No, they don't make those on Sundays anymore. I got bear claws instead. Okay, well, let's get this stuff open. Huh? Okay. All right, there we are. Uh -huh. Where do you keep your eggs? In the refrigerator, right over there. Uh -huh. Find them? Yeah, I got them. You know, Joe, I don't like to say anything, but I can't keep coming over here to your place every morning. Well, it was your idea. Nobody asked you. Yeah, but I know how you are. You don't know how to cook a decent breakfast for yourself. Is the coffee ready yet? Uh-uh. No, it's not perking yet. Hey, you sure there's nothing wrong with this spot? It's been on for ten minutes. Yeah, well, you forgot to plug it in. Oh, uh-huh. Now, let's see. Well, what do you want? Well, better put the toast on. Do you always make the toast before you cook the eggs? Yeah. You remember yesterday, the toast was pretty cold. Oh, yeah, that's right. I better hold off for a minute. Yeah. Scrambled eggs okay? Well, we had them yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is that the only way you know how to fix them? I know what you'd like. One of my Spanish omelets. When did you say your mother was coming back? Well, in about three more days. Yeah, that'll make a week, won't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, I guess I can work something out with Amy. Wife doesn't like me coming over here every morning like this. Well, I told you before, I can make out all right here. Uh, oh, I know how it is. You think you're imposing. You'd be lost without your can opener. Say, is this uh, armor of the yours going to take very long? We haven't got very much time, you know. I'll have it on your plate in a jiffy. What time are we supposed to see those victims? 9.30 at the county hospital. Where's your tomato? In the refrigerator. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, 23 jobs in three months. Those guys really move, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Nice tomatoes, Joe. That Hollenbeck job last night. Vicious punks. Yeah, there's no reason to work the old man over the way they did. What'd the doctor say? Well, he's going to get over it all right, but they kicked out all of his front teeth. He's 50 years old. Same M.O. Every job. Aren't you going to peel those? 
No, skin's good for you. Now, uh, you got a nice big Bermuda? Hmm? Bermuda onion. Oh, yeah. I'll get you one. Oh, yeah. Kids. 19, 20 year old stick up artist. Knock a man's senses for a half a dollar. Robbing, slugging, kicking their way around the city. Yeah. This will be one bunch I'll be glad to catch up with. Here's your onion. Good. Well, now, wait a minute. You're going to peel that, aren't you? And lose half the flavor? I don't know. I always peel them. I see now. There now. Now, mix the whole works together. You going to put it in that pan on the stove there? Yes, sir. Looks pretty hot, doesn't it? It's smoking. Joe, that's the way you cook a Spanish omelet. Hot, fire, and fast. Into the pan. The whole trick in making a good Spanish omelet is you got to work fast. Yeah. What are all those little brown flakes on the top there? Oh, the onion skins. Huh? No, I don't know. That doesn't look right to me. Wait till you taste it. I got it. Friday talking. Elton Young, Joe. Romero there with you. Yeah, he's here. You two are supposed to see those robbery victims at the county hospital this morning, aren't you? Yeah, at 9.30. Well, cancel that out. Gonzalez and Powers are covering on that. Yeah, how come? Just got the call. South Grand and Colonial, 211 on slugging. Same description. Looks like the kid bandits. All right, we'll get right on it. It's a new stand near the corner. Right. Bye. Look at that, Joe. I just took it out of the pan. Yeah. Best Spanish omelet I ever made. That's too bad. We're not going to have time to eat it. 8.55 a.m. We left the house and drove to the scene of the holdup, one door from the corner of South Grand and Colonial Avenue. The victims were Mr. and Mrs. John Wilden, proprietors of a small newspaper and soft drink stand just off the intersection. Mrs. Wilden was being carried to a waiting ambulance when we got there. She was unconscious. From her forehead to her chin, her face was a swollen mass of welts. Her nose had been broken and she had fractures of the jaw and cheekbone. Her husband, John Wilden, age 56, had a single bruise on his forehead over his left eye. We questioned him after the ambulance attendants gave him first aid. His description of the holdup men tallied almost perfectly. One was a redhead, the other one had dark hair, both about the same height. I'd say they're as tall as you are, officer. Matches, Joe. Kid Bennett. Yeah. Had you ever seen either one of these men before, Mr. Wilden? Around the neighborhood, maybe? No, I never did. I don't know why they picked on Madeline and me for a holdup. We've never been robbed before. We just got this little hole in the wall here. Don't see how it could look worthwhile to any crook. You usually open up this early on Sunday morning? Oh, yeah. Sunday's one of our big days, you see. We handle all the Sunday papers. You get our big trade from the people going to church up the street there. St. Joseph's? Yes, sir, I see. After the church lets out, most of the people head down this way and pick up their Sunday papers. We sell about 15, 20 papers after every Mass. It's a nice little business, you know. We close up after 12, 15. Well, when did the holdup take place? Can you remember that, sir? Well, I'd say 8.30, a few minutes after. I went down to the Athens Cafe down the street there. I wanted to get some change. I left Madeline here to handle the counter. Madeline, that's my wife. Yes, sir. And when I got back, she wasn't behind the counter. I took a look behind here and saw our cash box laying on the cement there, empty, and I didn't know what to think. Mm-hmm. What'd you do then? Well, I pushed through this door here. It's a little dinky storeroom just back at the counter. It's where we keep our supplies, candy and soda water. I see. You mind if we take a look, sir? No, no, no. Come right ahead. Mm-hmm. You see, what? When I came in, first thing I saw was Madeline. That's my wife. And she was lying there on the boards moaning, had her hands over her face. The two young fellows were standing over her, and both had guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did they do when they saw you? And they grabbed me and asked for money. I told them I didn't have any. I began to holler for help. One of them slugged me with his gun, and then they ran out. I'm still a little shaky. You mind if I sit down? And... Go ahead, sir. Oh, here. Let me get this box for you. Thank you. Say, I wonder if we could get you some water, maybe a cold drink from the cooler. Oh, no, no. But you'll find a half pint behind those cases over there, a little brandy I keep put away. Oh, over here? Yes, that's right, behind those cases. Now, I don't usually drink on Sundays. This is an exception, I guess. Here you are, Mr. Roman. What's that on the floor there, Ben? 
No, near your foot there. Oh, I see. Oh, the light's not very good. Oh, it's a book of matches. Yeah. Are these yours, Mr. Wilden? These matches? No, I don't carry them. Well, your wife's, I guess, huh? I don't think so. Neither one of us smoke. What's that ad printed on the back, yeah? Uh, Big Ten Cafe. Steaks, chop, short orders, open all night. West Pico. Do you handle cigarettes and cigars here, sir? No, sir. Candy and soft drinks and newspapers, that's all. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, inside of the matchbook cover, Joe. Some scribbling on it. Mm. George Bell, S. Cameron, 5th and Alameda. Uh, do you recognize this at all, Mr. Wilden? Big Ten Cafe. No, I've never been there. Now, how about the names here, inside the cover? George Bell, S. Cameron. No, I never heard of them. Well, when you first came in here, Mr. Wilden, do you remember where the holdup men were standing? Oh, not too well, uh... Well, one was over there, and one was over there, I think. Could be, Joe. One of them might have dropped it. Mm -hmm. Trace them from that matchbook? Do you think that's possible? I don't know yet. How would you trace them that way? Analysis? Some kind of scientific work? No, sir. Leg work. 9.28 a.m. We call latent fingerprints. As soon as they arrived, we dropped Mr. Wilden off at Georgia Street Receiving Hospital to see his wife. Ben and I drove back to the office. We had the crime report typed up and got out a supplementary broadcast on our original APB. We asked Frank Cunningham and R&I to run the names George Bell and S. Cameron through the files for a possible mate. We checked with a restaurant advertised on the cover of the matchbook, the Big Ten Cafe. The manager of the cafe failed to recognize either the names on the matchbook or the descriptions of the holdup men. 9.52, we checked back in at the office. I'll get it. Robbery Romero. Yeah, Frank. Uh-huh, uh -huh, yeah. Good, right. Thank you. Cunningham? You got a make on the name George Bell. Another one for Sam Cameron. Both of them run together. Got long juvenile records. Good. You got an address on them? Yeah. Won't be hard to run down. What do you mean? Main jail. Five days before, George Bell, a laborer, and Samuel Cameron, a part-time jewelry salesman, had been booked at the main jail on charges of being drunk and disorderly. The day after his arrest, Cameron was bailed out. Bell was still in the drunk tank. Ben and I went down to the main jail and talked to him. He didn't fit the description of either of the bandits. He was very cooperative, but he stated that he'd been very drunk and he couldn't remember too much. Just don't know, Sergeant. Sam and I went out and tied one on. When it came to, we were here in the drunk tank. You have no idea at all how your names got on this matchbook. I'm trying to think. We're pretty well heated up, Sam and me. That's another thing, that dirty Sam. What do you mean? He got a friend of his to come up here and bail him out. Think he'd do anything for me? No. I bought the liquor. He lets me sit here now. Dirty Sam. You think he might remember about that matchbook? I don't know. I'm disgusted with him. If you see him, you can tell him that. Just let him know he's off my list. How about the address here on the matchbook, George? It says Fifth and Alameda. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Were you and Cameron hitting some of the spots around that area? No, we were messing around over in Dogtown. Didn't get down by Alameda at all. Well, it must have some tie-in for you. Fifth and Alameda? No. The only guy I know down there is Sanchez. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah? Just a minute. Sanchez. Gus Sanchez, sure. I wanted to see Gus. I thought he'd put a bell for us. Yeah, go ahead. I got it now. I think I have anyway. It was the morning after, and I woke up here in the tank. Oh, a big head, you know. Really whip. Mm-hmm. Now, the first thing I thought of was out. I figured Gus Sanchez might pop for bail. A friend of mine, you know. Gus works at the bar at Fifth and Alameda. That's it. Well, how's it tie in? Well, uh, this other mooch is in the tank next to me. Somebody's popped bail for him, and he's getting out in an hour. So I asked him to call Gus for me, and he said he would. He wrote my name down, and he wrote down Sam's, too. A dirty Sam. And he took down Gus's address. Yeah, Fifth and Alameda. You remember what this man looked like when I took your name? Oh, let's see... No, everything was going around. He was, he was kind of tall, I don't know. Would you remember him if you saw him again? Guy did me a favor. I'd remember him. Not like that dirty Sam. Well, how about his name? Did he tell you that? No, I didn't ask him. I should have, huh? You sure about the day this man was released? Positive. The same day I came in, Tuesday. Well, okay, Bell, thanks very much. We'll be checking back with you. Yeah, all right. Hey, what about this guy? You got a bait for them? Well, maybe if he's the one we want. Yeah, what do you do? 
He lost his matches. Ben and I left the drunk tank and went down the hall to check with the officer in charge. We paged through the release book and found that seven men had been bailed out or discharged from the jail on the previous Tuesday. We went back to the record bureau and had them pull the mug shots on all seven men. Then we took the pictures back to the drunk tank and showed them to George Bell. No. 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 Yeah, this one, I think. Can't be sure. I think that's him. George Bell attentively identified the mugshot of a Fred Gunther, WMA, 21 years old. Gunther had a previous record of grand theft auto, purse snatching, and drunk charges. His picture matched closely with the description of one of the suspects. 4 a.m., we contacted the Kid Bandit's most recent victim, John Wilden, at his home. We asked him to look at the same group of mugshots that we'd shown to George Bell. Here. Here, this here. Here's one of them. You sure, Mr. Wilden? He's the one who slugged me. Who is he? His name's Fred Gunther. Well, then you know him. You want me to identify him? Yes, sir, when we find him. are listening to Dragnet, authentic stories of your police force in action. Now, here's an authentic report from Fatima Cigarettes. 1949, Fatima more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. 1950, another record-breaking year, with more long cigarette smokers insisting on Fatima quality than ever before. In 1951, enjoy Fatima quality yourself. Yes, friends, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Quality of tobaccos, the finest Turkish and domestic varieties, extra mild and superbly blended, to give you a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Quality of manufacture, smooth, plump cigarettes rolled in the finest paper money can buy. Quality, even to the appearance of the bright, clean, golden yellow package, carefully wrapped and sealed to bring you Fatima's rich, Fresh, extra mild flavor. Compare Fatima yourself. Fatima's now cost the same as other long cigarettes, but your first puff will tell you... Ah, that's different. Yes, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Start enjoying Fatima quality yourself. Insist on Fatima, the quality king-size cigarette. Best of all long cigarettes. <laughs> Monday, March 4th, 9 a.m. We checked out the suspect, Fred Gunther. No trace of him at any of his previous addresses. We began checking with the other victims of the kid bandits. After a day and a half of legwork, we sat down and figured up the results. More than two-thirds of the victims definitely tabbed Gunther as one of the holdup men. The next step was the record bureau. We had them pull the packages on every one of Gunther's known friends and associates. There were more than 30 of them. We had mug shots pulled on each one of them and made the rounds of the victims for the second time. Approximately half of the victims had singled out one picture as that of Gunther's partner in the holdups. We pulled the package on the man and checked his mama sheet. His name was Harold Reimers, WMA, age 19. Previous record included car stripping and one charge ADW, no conviction. Friday, March 8th. We continued our check of the friends and associates known to the two suspects, Gunther and Reimers. We got nowhere. Two weeks passed. On March 23rd, we got a tip from an informant about a girlfriend of Fred Gunther's, a vocalist working at a downtown dance hall during intermissions. Long haul. Yeah. One more flight. Uh-huh. Climb four flights of stairs and then they expect you to dance. Yeah. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah, come on. Big enough floor, huh? Well, it shows a little wear. The place has been here for years. Look at those walls and that ceiling. Sure could use a fresh coat of paint. Is her name Stanley, is that right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, excuse me? Is your name Lorraine Stanley? Yeah, that's right. Sweet Lorraine, that's my billing. 
You with the band? No, we're police officers. I'd like to talk to you for a minute if we can. Oh, sure, all right. I was just rehearsing a little. What's it about, officer? Do you know a Fred Gunther, Miss Stanley? Fred? Yeah, I know him. I used to be engaged to Fred. You happen to know where he is now? No, I don't. Guess I haven't heard from him in three, four months. Usually looks me up when I'm in town. Maybe he's sore about something. I don't know. Well, has he contacted you at all? Not since I got back from Bakersfield a month ago. I played 32 weeks in Bakersfield, the Ramble Inn. Sure hated to leave. Nice place. Mm -hmm. Where does Gunther stay in town? Do you happen to know that? Used to be that hotel on South Flower. Called him there, but they said he moved. I used to like Fred a lot. Not enough to marry him, though. Do you have any idea where he might have gone, where we could contact him? No, I really don't. Nothing wrong, is there, about Fred, I mean? No, it's just routine investigation. We'd like to talk to him. What's it about? Can you tell me? It's a robbery investigation. We want to locate Gunther. Do you happen to know any of his friends here in the city? No. Maybe that's why he didn't call. He's in trouble. Mm -hmm. Robbery? Is that it? Well, we just like to talk to him, that's all. Well, if he's done something wrong, I'm not going to hide him. I can't afford to get mixed up in it. I've got a career to think about. I've worked too hard to throw it away. Well, how about the places Gunther usually visits, Miss Stanley? Bars, restaurants. You know any of those? No, I remember a few. I can give you the names if you like. Poor Fred. I hope he didn't do it for me. Ma'am? Fred says he's in love with me. I don't know. He thinks I want money. Maybe that's why he's doing it. I told him, but he never believed me. All I want is my career. Well, do you think that Gunther might come around here to see you? Probably. He usually does when I'm in town. How about where you're living? I'm staying at a different hotel this trip. He doesn't know where he is. Poor Fred. He's going to be awfully disappointed. Hmm? How do you mean? Oh, he said he was going to get money and buy a ring. He's going to marry me this time. Poor Fred. This is my new theme, officers. You like it? Uh-huh. Just one more thing, Miss Stanley. If Gunther contacts you by phone, will you be sure and let us know? All right, I'll do that. It's your beautiful theme, isn't it? Piano player in Bakersfield, he wrote it for me. Yes, ma'am. Fred understands. I don't want to hurt him, but I can't marry him. How do I make him understand? How do I explain it? I don't think you'll have to, ma'am. Before we left Lorraine Stanley, we told her that if Gunther should contact her, not to tell him that she'd talked with us. Stakeouts were placed on the dance hall where she worked and at the hotel where she was staying. Gunther's known hangouts were also covered. The next night, the kid bandits were back in business. They hit twice, a liquor store on Franklin Avenue and a tavern on South Flower. Gunther and Reimers were again identified as the two suspects. The stakeouts continued. The search went on. Four days later, we got a tip from the proprietor of a shoe shine stand on West Temple that Gunther's partner, Harold Reimers, had been seen entering a small hotel up the street from his stand. We drove over and checked with the desk clerk. He identified Reimers' mugshot. He told us that the suspect wasn't in, but that he was expected back that night. Ben and I went on stakeout in his hotel room. 7 p.m. Rhymers failed the show. Getting a little hungry, Joe. You? Yeah. What time you got now? Uh, 20 after 7. My stomach's starting to growl. And yeah. hey, what's that, a parade? Well, I don't think so. Let's see. Oh, it's the Salvation Army Band. Oh, yeah, Saturday night. Might as well check the office, huh? See if we can't get a relief. Yeah. Would you get me Michigan 5211, please? Michigan 5211. Yeah, we'll pay for it. Thanks. Would you close the window, George? A little noise. Yeah, okay. Robbery, please. Yeah, Young, this is Romero. How's that? You sure? Okay, thank you. Gunther and Reimers, they pulled a hold up down South Main. When? 20 minutes ago, Gunther got away. Yeah. They got Reimers. 7.45 p.m., Ben and I got back to the city hall and went to the interrogation room. Together with Young and Carr from robbery, we tried to question the suspect, Harold Reimers. We talked to him for over an hour. He refused to tell us anything. We took him to the main jail where he was booked on 211 PC. 9.15 p.m., we went back to the office. I'll get it. Robbery, Romero. Just a minute. For you, Joe. Okay, thanks. Friday talking. Sergeant, this is Lorraine Stanley. Yeah, Miss Stanley. I'm over at work. The dance hall, you remember? Yes, ma'am. Anything wrong? Well, Fred just called me, Sergeant. I told the officers here. 
Fred Gunther? Yes, ma'am. Where is he? Did he say? No. All he said was he wanted to see me. Yeah? He said he was coming right over. 9.25 p.m. We called the men on stake out at the dance hall and alerted them. Elton Young, Ben, and I got in the car and drove over. We checked with the detail on stakeout. Gunther hadn't been spotted, but because of the large crowd entering and leaving the dance hall, it was possible that he could have gotten in unnoticed. We talked to the Stanley girl. She hadn't seen or heard anything further from the suspect. Ben and I staked out in her dressing room where Gunther said he'd meet the girl. It was a small converted storeroom at one end of the dance floor just behind the bandstand. Lorraine Stanley was on during the intermission. We waited. What have you got, Jill? Uh, almost 10.30. This guy must feel pretty sure of himself. He pulls a robbery, he's almost picked up, and three hours later he makes a date to show in a public play. No, well, he hasn't shown yet. I'm not too sure about that Stanley girl. How do you mean? Well, if she's that big an attraction for him. This is the only way out, huh? Besides that fire escape off the alley. Yeah, Young's covering the alley. Come on. He's up the alley behind one of those trucks. He can't go far. That's a dead end. Stay here, young, and cut him off. You all right? Yeah, he slugged me, knocked me down. I didn't see him in the dark. Come on, Ben. Yeah. Easy, huh? Sure dark. Yeah. Watch it behind that truck. Make room. I'm coming out. Watch it, Joe. <laughs> Missed him. Come on after you, young. You want to stay with him, Young? We'll call in. Yeah, right. Closest place is that little cafe off the alley to the left. Thanks. Come on, Ben. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, I guess they got a phone inside. Come on. Wait a minute. As soon as we get Gunter downtown, we're going to come right back here. What for? Take a look at that fry cook in the window there. Yeah, what about him? That fellow makes a Spanish omelet exactly like I do. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On July 19th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 86, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. Friends, if you're a long cigarette smoker like I am, remember, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Now, believe me, this difference is mighty important. So important that you'll always remember the first pack of Fatimas that you buy. Fatima's fast-growing popularity backs me up on that. But look, you can prove it to yourself by getting a pack of Fatimas tomorrow. You'll find that they now cost the same as other long cigarettes. And your first pack will convince you to go right on smoking them. Join me and the new thousands who enjoy Fatima's extra mildness. Fatima's rich, better flavor and aroma. You'll discover what all we Fatima smokers know. In Fatima, the difference is quality. Fred Gunther and Harold Reimers were tried and convicted on several counts of robbery and assault. They received sentences as prescribed by law, and are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary. Just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet portions transcribed from Los Angeles. We the People is next with stories of today on NBC. Thank you.